Assalamualaikum. My name is Yusra Asif. My role number is PP1650256 and my group number is 5. We were assigned the topic drug abuse. In this presentation, I'll be covering central nervous system stimulants, which are cocaine and amphetamines. And these drugs are classified as drugs of abuse. And in this presentation, there's one case study which also covers how to assess the drug abuse and the initial therapy associated with the management of drug abuse. So what are the CNS or central nervous system stimulants? These are the type of drugs which have agonistic effects on normal physiology of the brain. These stimulants increase blood rate, heart rate, and the breathing rate as they increase the level of chemicals that are associated with um, the period of excitement and basically the chemicals such as dopamine and norepinephrine, which are which control the mental and physical activities and they, they, they alert the senses and the user experiences hyper focus and an increase in their mental and physical activities. Previously, these drugs were used to treat various disorders like depression, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, and narcolepsy. But recently, these are banned due to their recreational use. Next up, we are going to discuss about cocaine, which is a CNS stimulant. So what is cocaine? It is a powerful addictive stimulant. And it is now classified as a Schedule II drug due to its medicinal use, but it is banned worldwide as a recreational drug. It is a naturally occurring alkaloid and it is extracted from Erythroxylon coca plant. It has vasoconstructive and local anesthetic properties. The medicinal uses are mostly associated with um, the release of dopamine and norepinephrine. It has an indirect effect on neurophysiology, including endogenous support systems. People who use cocaine get addicted to the rush it creates in the brain. Anyway, so there are many ways to administer cocaine. Usually, most frequently, it is snorted, like cocaine in the powdered form. It is snorted like lines are made and um, mostly a dollar bill or any sort of bill is rolled up and snorted. But it is water soluble, so it is injectable as well. It cannot be smoked due to its high melting point, but there are other derivants that are being made in the market and they're so they're much cheaper and sold under the name of crack crack is another form of cocaine and it is extracted by adding the free base that is cocaine hydrochloride in water in which it is solubilized at its water soluble base and then the alkali is added the precipitates are formed in the aqueous solution, which is then evaporated, and the left over is extract is called the rock. The rocks are sold um, at a much cheaper price, like dollar ten or twenty. So there are many adverse effects of cocaine use, which are mostly related with the cardiac complications. And these cardiac complications, they can occur anytime before, after, or even during the use. And they can prove to be fatal, and a person can die on spot. So with the use, like the journal use of acute or chronic cocaine use, the cardiac complication which occurs are hypertension, arrhythmias, myocardial infarction, dilated and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, myocarditis and aortic dissection. The mechanism induced myocardial infarction is most likely multifactorial. Like it involves one or more of the processes like coronary artery vasoconstriction, increased oxygen demand, and which increases the blood pressure and increases the heart rate. 
then there is like obstruction like due to the platelet aggregation and thrombus formation, coronary vasopathism, and arrhythmia. This adverse effect leads to seizures or heart attack. It develops right after the toxicity, which is developed due to the chronic use of cocaine. Next up, we have amphetamine. Amphetamine is another CNS stimulant and it is used to treat ADHD and narcolepsy. These are like the disorder associated with sleeplessness or general uh, signs of brain malfunction. But they have like various adverse effects, which includes restlessness again, acne, blurred vision, and rare side effects, which are um, associated with the toxicity are seizures, psychosis, and heart problems. These recreational drugs are just as addictive, and they have um, a very vast history of use. We can see that the Chinese prepared the ephedrine containing products from a plant in Mahueng, which is known as ephedra vulgaris. In East Africa and Arabian Peninsula, the leaves of the catbush, catidolis, were chewed as they contain an alkaloid catinone, which has the stimulant effect. Originally, amphetamine was first synthesized in 1887 and the methamphetamine in 1919. Down the lane, the legal sanctions were placed, and through these implications, around 1970s, the illegal production and market of methamphetamine powder arose, which was marketed under the name of speed, meth, crank, or crystal meth. In young users, the journal A Bitter Taste of the Crystal Meth was masked by adding flavors like cherry, cola, or berry flavors, like sweet flavors to mask the bitter taste. Governments also try to place restriction on the retail sale of ephedrine and pseudoephedrine as they are the precursors in making methamphetamine. Still, they're very much being sold illegally worldwide, and they have, there are many other regulations that are being placed on their use and Abuse. This is a case study on adverse effect, toxicities, and initial treatment of the addiction of CNS stimulants. The case study, as it says, the DC a person, a college student, was hooked up. Yani, this person is a young person in his mid 20s, and he was hooked on to speed. Um, a street name of cocaine or amphetamine by his classmates during his finals. So, as we learned that amphetamine is associated with increased focus and alert, he got addicted pretty soon and he finds speed very much to his liking and started using it daily. The several symptoms that were observed by people around them were him was that he went days without sleeping or showering and started losing his appetite because he just wouldn't feel hungry. His friends started calling him a tweaker and he started exhibiting classic signs of chronic abuse, which are likely to progress if he continues to use. If we were to take him into medication or therapy, what should be the initial approach? We can assess this by devising soap notes in which we see the subject and we know the subject is a college student, a chronic math addict showing classical signs of drug abuse. Our object is initial addiction therapy. I feel like I should mention here that initial addiction therapy is non-pharmacological as there is no such pharmacological management yet devised for treatment of addiction. There are though ways in which we can manage or reduce the drug abuse. The assessment, our assessment can be done by 
assessing the symptoms and the symptoms and toxicities that are developed by the chronic cues. Since we know he's a chronic user, so we are going to assess his symptoms. The tweaker is generally regarded as mentally unstable, aggressive, and emotionally labile, unpredictable person. He has like violent tendencies which are harmful for himself and the people around him. The chronic user characteristically develop paranoia and they hallucinate a lot and they started they start they start blaming other people around them and they have sleepless days and night and are always craving drugs. They are unable to identify um, the psychosis and the thing that I, the only thing that can bring them peace is another dose of the drug. So the toxicities which develop are the physiological toxicities and the neurological toxicities. Ne physiological toxicities are quite visible and we can see hypertension, stroke seizures, hyperthermia, dendrochorias, rhabdomyolysis renal failure, cardiac arrhythmias, cardio, myopathies, myocardial infarction, and malnutrition. We can identify in our patient that he had he had some dysfunction, hypothermia, and loss of appetite. And the neurotoxicity, which is quite liable in this situation, is permanent. As it involves dopaminergic and serotonergic receptors, they are permanently damaged in that. The plan is devised after assessing the symptoms, first of all. Um, the initial plan can be devised like once after the patient is in rehab or they are like they're kept away from the drugs. So they will initially face fatigue hypersomnolence, de depression, and hedonia. And these are the milder symptoms they face within one to two weeks. Depression may persist and the person can go to psychologist and they can have psychological therapy. As we already know, there are no pharmacological treatments for eliminating drug abuse. There are though non-pharmacological ways in which the drug dependence can be managed. The most effective treatment so far, which is used worldwide, are the psychosocial therapies such as cognitive behavioral therapy and contingency management. One of the names that is given to cognitive behavioral therapy is ART or ART. Just in this therapy, the patient, the distressed patient, is calmed down as the environmental factors or the stimuli are decreased which makes them quite hyper aware and you know paranoia to just reduce on their paranoia they are being they're being reassured the r stands for reassurance they're being reassured that the condition is caused by the drug and it will resolve eventually and the talk down involves reassuring and then that the reality oriented communication like there are other ways in which whatever their feeling can be assessed and controlled and the drugs is not the answer. So these are the initial ways in which, and these are effective and initial ways in which the drug abuse can be managed. For a person who is showing severe symptoms of psychosis or their other um, behavioral or anxiety is out of control, then they are given benzodiazepine, which is an anti anxiolytic drug like diazepam or lorazepam which is given orally or intramuscularly or intravenously that is the injections the oral dose is 10 to 30 mg and the intramuscular or intravenous dose is 2 to 10 mg whereas for lorazepam the 2 to 4 mg oral and i am this can be given like um at the initial stage, if the person is quite out of control, 
but for persistent psychosis like for persistent as in even after two weeks the person can be given neuroleptics like haloperidol or resperidone resperidone is preferable due to low anticholinergic activity and it is preferable for this very reason haloperidol dose is 5 to 10 milligram oral im or iv whereas for resperidone it is 2 to 4 milligram orally it's not administered intramuscularly or intravenously so this is the plan and this is the certain treatment for drug abuse as we already know there is no pharmacological treatment so this is something that the rehab or the includes and this is how patients of drug abuse are mostly managed or taken away from their old behaviors. Thank you for listening.